Tanner Tech. Tanner Tech. Tanner Tech. Tanner Tech. Hello, this is Tanner Tech, and today I'm going to show you how to build a high voltage ZVS driver. This is the completed setup of my ZVS driver, with my power supply right here, the actual ZVS driver right here, and the flyback right here. This is the power supply section of my ZVS driver. So for my power supply, I have the 120 volt mains coming into this high amperage transformer. This transformer puts out 35 volts at approximately 10 amps, which is more than enough to power this ZVS driver. This switch right here is a normal wall switch, and it is used to turn on and off the power without having to plug it in and unplug it. This right here is the bridge rectifier. This bridge rectifier is mounted to the heat sink of the ZVS driver because it gets extremely hot under, under 10 amps. So it is mounted to this heat sink which keeps it equitably cool. The bridge rectifier provides DC current for the actual ZVS driver. The high amperage power transformer that provides my ZVS driver with its much needed power I found in an old junkyard that came out of an old street light. It was the ballast transformer for a sodium vapor light. The other power of the power supply on the ZVS driver are these two filter capacitors. This is the ZVS driver part of my setup. So as you can see on here, the power inputs go onto this printed circuit board. This circuit board I manufactured myself using ferric chloride and a sharpie marker. I made this circuit board surface mount because it was the easiest way to hook them up to the MOSFETs that were sitting on the heatsink. To see how to make this printed circuit board, you will have to watch my upcoming video where I will show you how to look at a circuit diagram and use a sharpie to draw your own circuit board. I did not use any plans for the circuit board, I just drew with sharpie on it and played it by ear. The actual circuit diagram for this ZVS driver is the stereotypical ZVS driver that you can find all over the internet. This is the circuit diagram of my ZVS driver. I found almost all the parts that are on this ZVS driver in broken electronics with the exception of the two MOSFETs and the bridge rectifier. These two MOSFETs are IRFP250s, and they were found on eBay. The bridge rectifier was found at Radio Shack. All of the other small components were found on old power supplies. The inductor is a high amperage inductor found in a computer power supply. These two capacitors down here were found in a variety of different electronics and I had to use lots of different capacitors to create a 0.68 microfarad capacitor with enough voltage rating to supply my needs. These capacitors though get hot so I'm going to have to either put them on a heatsink or add more capacitors to create a larger 0.68 microfarad capacitor because they overheat so much that they melt the hot glue that's, ho that's holding them to this wooden piece. The heat sink that these were ma are mounted on was found in an old computer graphics card. The flyback transformer that actually produces the high voltage was found, of course, in an old CRT television. The flyback transformer produces approximately 40,000 volts with a high amperage. The transformer though does get hot so I can only run the ZVS driver for about five or six minutes before the capacitors and the uh, flyback transformer get really hot. The flyback transformer has five windings of thick gauge wire. I mounted the whole setup to two pieces of wood now, when you are running a high voltage application such as this, the anode, which is the red wire, tends to keep fairly cool. The cathode, however, or the negative side, 
it's very hot because the electrons are coming out of the anode, shooting through the air and hitting the cathode at a very high speed, which is relative to the voltage. This creates a very hot cathode, which is why I use the heat sink. The anode and cathode are hooked up to the flyback transformer via alligator clip wires. Now for the part that everybody's been waiting for, the turning on of the high voltage power supply. So it's really easy. All I do is flip the on switch, and boom, we get super long high voltage high amperage arcs. After you are finished running the CVS driver, you need to make sure to touch the anode to the cathode to discharge the flyback transformer because of it has internal capacitance. If you don't do this, you might get shocked when you're trying to touch things and rearrange. Now if you look on here, this is the driver. The heatsink is fairly cool. The MOSFETs aren't even hot. But the tr flyback transformer is warm and the windings are hot, which signals that I need to use more high amperage wire. The capacitors are extremely hot, and they are almost melting the hot glue, which means I'll have to wait a little bit before doing my ZVS driver again. Now, the heating problem, as I previously discussed, can be fixed by making a bigger capacitor. Another cool thing to do with a high voltage power supply is to make uh, Jacob's Ladder. These are the contraptions you see in the stereotypical mad scientist lab where it has the arc that is going up like this. So, when I turn it on, you see a pretty cool arc that forms on the Jacob's Ladder. Now, because this high voltage power supply uses a really high voltage at fairly high amperage for the voltage it's operating at, this power supply has the potential to kill you. So, I would recommend, do not touch the terminals while this power supply is on, and always use an insulating stick when you're touching any of the terminals, or making arcs, because this power supply can kill you. This is a disclaimer, do not touch the power supply because it's dangerous and it will kill you. Only use all safety precautions and common sense. Do not build this if you don't have any previous experience of electricity. Thank you. Thank you for watching, and please subscribe.